in the middle of the problem. So we're looking for position, and we did find velocity. How do I find the position function? Antiderivative. So we got velocity. We're looking at velocity. So we're going to get recover the position. So use R of t for our position. R of t equals the integral vt dt. I think I did the last i and ij. Nope, I did the last one in diamond bracket notation. So I can either do it in diamond notation or ijk. So I'm going to go with that. Well, I'll do diamond here also. All right, find the antiderivative. Guess and check's always reasonable, as long as you do your checking and your guess isn't too horrible. Zero is not a very good guess for your antiderivative. So this time around, I didn't look back at my work, and so I just added my constants inside my vector instead of doing a plus constant vector at the end. Doesn't matter which of the two ways you do it, as long as each coordinate gets some constant term. So, how did we find what the ABC were again? The like uh, I <coughs> had to give that as an initial condition somewhere. Somewhere we wrote that in. I should have had it written down. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right there. So we'll also need to impact position, or else we won't know where to start. Is that impact velocity? Given in the question, or is yeah, we? yeah, it would have to be given, or else you just have con you just have extra constants hanging around. Uh, so we're going to need to know our impact position, or our position at some other time value, in order to figure out these three constants. So this is good enough for us right here. Uh, but like I said, if you have three, if you have your impact position, basically, if you had a r of zero or any other t value, if you knew your position, you can recover the entire position function. So we'll leave that right there. And we're going to go into 13.2. So 13.2 is projectile motion. And we'll start in two dimensions. So this will probably be a review for everybody who's taken physics 1. That was 13.2. Oh, no. Was it really? Oh, it's fine. Oh, good. We're still on 13.2. We're on the second page. All right. So this is called ideal projectile motion. So projectiles without wind resistance, if you just have gravity and no friction, the projectiles will travel in a parabola. So that <coughs> parabola is fine if you have uh, y as a function of x. We can think of parabolas. 
But this curve is now going to be a function of t, a parameterized function with t as the parameter. So it's going to behave a little differently. Uh, it'll still trace the same arc out, but we're going to treat it uh, in a parameterized way. So you need to know two things. One is the initial angle, and the other is the initial or the velocity at some point. So let's say we launch at an angle theta. So that would be, basically it would be the slope. Now we don't normally measure slope with an angle, but it's the direction the slope would be pointing. Uh, however, when I say slope in parametrics, we know that that's an actual vector that points some direction. So this angle right here will be the angle between the vector, the velocity vector at zero, and the x-axis. So that's how we're measuring this angle. So zero would be a horizontal, and then pi over two would be vertical. So it's somewhere in between. So it's the tangent line at zero. It's the yeah, it's the tangent, the tangent vector at zero. Well. It's the angle that one makes with the x-axis. So yeah, I could label this right here. This is v uh, r prime of 0 is this vector. So that's your initial velocity, or v of 0. What's an r? Is r prime of 0? Yes, that's the velocity, r prime of 0. So initial position, that'll be r of 0. And if we line our axes up like this, it will be 0, 0. If you don't have your initial 0, 0 point, uh, you don't launch from 0, 0, you could just uh, change this around to a, b, or whatever you want to use. How in the world do I write the velocity at zero? In x, y vector component form, where the x will be the cosine theta r prime zero, and the y will be the sine theta r prime zero? That's correct. We're going to use polars. So all we know, we don't know the actual magnitude of the velocity, but we do know the angle it makes. So we're going to write it as its magnitude Let's use, I'll use v sub 0 is the initial magnitude. So I'll use v0 to mean the magnitude of the velocity at 0. So I don't have to write magnitude v of 0 all the time. So that's what I mean by v0. Which, of course, the magnitude of r prime of 0. So we're going to write it in polar form. So we have the magnitude multiplied by cos theta sine theta. Oh, absolutely, it yields Cartesian coordinates. But it's written as a radius and a theta and an angle. So you're, what's the best way to think about it? You're using Cartesian coordinates but describing them in a polar way. So I can do things like take a dot product right here. Whereas if I was in true polar coordinates, uh, my first coordinate would not be x and the second coordinate would not be, it would be an r and a theta, or theta and an r. So a dot product would be look completely different. It wouldn't be multiply the angles and then add that to the product of the radii. I don't know what that would give you, but probably nothing terribly useful <laughs> to, to try to dot two uh, polar forms together. So we're going to uh, assume the only force is gravity. So the only acceleration is gravity. So that's going to be a constant downward force. We'll use 
use F equals MA. So force of gravity is the mass times the acceleration of gravity. Acceleration. <laughs> All right, so that's a physics thing, right? F equals MA? Yeah. Okay. Most of you approve. All right, so acceleration, we're using the um, R double prime, so it's the derivative of the derivative of position. So that's our acceleration. Now my notes, I just have negative mgj. Why do I have that? Okay, yeah, so G is our acceleration, M is our mass, and then J means uh, vertical, yeah. or J hat, however you want to write it. I don't, I'm not a hat person. I mean, I like hats, but not writing with hats. <laughs> M, G, J. Okay, so why don't we divide by M, get that out of here. Oh, that's a really nice equation. I like diamond bracket notation, so I'm going to switch to that. We're in two dimensions. You could do this problem with three dimensions and just have zero as your uh, one of your coordinates. So we have a zero x and then minus g. So that's our acceleration. And the r double prime of t is the acceleration of uh, of t. It's the acceleration of the uh, projectile or particle that's traveling in this path. So just remember, r is always a position function that will form a curve. So derivative is going to be velocity. All right, compute r prime. So all you have to do, antiderivative of r double prime. And I believe you do have the initial conditions for this. The initial condition is a velocity. So you have the initial velocity. It's written somewhere up higher. There it is. So you should get a constant in your x, and then your y is a negative gt plus another constant. And you can write your constant vector at the end, like as a separate vector, or you can add it right inside the vector. It doesn't matter. And now we're going to go back and look at our velocity of 0, which is r prime of 0. So right at the very top of the screen, we're going to use that condition right there. So we had v0 times cos theta sine theta equals. Uh, now, remember, this was r prime of 0, not r prime of t. So this is not the, this is not the velocity at any time. This is the velocity specifically at 0 seconds. So I'm plugging in 0 for t. So we can write c1 and c2. So C1 equals V0 cos theta. C2 equals V0 sine theta. 
Do I need to do any more steps to show why that's the case? OK. I mean, you just multiply the v naught over, and then you got two equations. So not much going on there. All right, so that's our velocity, or our prime of t. So we'll write the full version with these values. So we got v naught sine theta comma negative g t plus v naught coat. Uh oh. Sine yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, your spidey essentially kick in any time you put cosine in for x and sine in for y. Doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. Some problems start out with a weird parameterization, but if you created the parameterization, something weird is probably happening. So you definitely want to at least double check if you have a cosine and sine for uh, y and x. This can also like you could have the like v o sine of theta if you're going away from the x-axis. So like the angle is going away from the x-axis, but the sine theta. Yeah. Well, if you're going to compute your angle in a weird way, like n like off how far from the y-axis you are, you probably want to use a different variable for it, and then call it phi, and then actually use theta in a regular way. Otherwise, sine and cosine won't mean what you think they mean. You can always use the opposites and adjacents and hypotenuse. But the x and y, then you have to measure your angle in a normal way. So we're just looking at x and y. So it's like sine and cosine are where they should be. All right, so that's our prime. And I want to get the position function. So how do we get the position? Integral. So regular r is the antiderivative r prime. So compute that right now. And remember, theta and v naught are constant. They're not variables. The only variable we have is t. C three and to C three, I just skipped right over it. C four is clear, anyways. Let me use C five. <laughs> All right, so there's our position right there. If we knew a position, we could figure out the constants. How in the world can we figure out the position? What position do we know about? Zero, zero, zero. So we only know the origin at time zero. So I don't know where it's landing. Uh, I could figure that out if I knew the magnitude, the initial velocity. Well, we actually saw the mass cancel out. That was the uh, that right there. So if there's no friction, the mass doesn't matter. Now, of course, there is friction, so the mass does matter. but in this world, we're firing this into a vacuum. So in a vacuum, like a feather falls as fast as a brick. Yeah. Well, the problem is we're just not in a vacuum is a real issue. It's very hard to imagine a world you don't inhabit. All right, so figure out the constants. So we know r of 0 is 0, 0.
So you have a choice to either write equations in vector form or to write multiple equations out. It doesn't really matter to me. If you're going to write multiple equations, so here I wrote the vector equation. If you're going to write multiple equations like I did the previous time, just make sure your equations are near each other. So if this equation is somewhere else far away, then I may not realize that you actually had both equations. Uh, so make sure if you're going to write multiple equations that they're right next to each other. Either or like can we like box them or something? Or you would not even if they're like farther away? Yeah, if they're further away, just rewrite. Closer to the rewrite them all in one area. Yeah, if they end up all over your page, just bring them all together. So I'm not looking at this thing over here, this other thing. So I did it both ways. Here I just did individual equations. Here I did the vector equation. And it doesn't matter whatever you feel more comfortable doing. So we're going to write the final R of t with these constants. It's actually a little less complicated because our c's just disappear. Any questions on this process we just went through here? You've probably done similar things in uh, physics class. You don't have to use these extra parentheses. The reason I wanted to use these extra parentheses so I didn't think it was cosine of theta <coughs> times t. So I'm supposed to take the cosine first and then multiply by t at the ends. So the order was super important. So I just grouped it all together, so I made sure I evaluate a cosine before I multiply by t. The other option is bring t to the front as regular coefficient position, and then you can avoid parentheses. But I strongly recommend, for example, if you see a cosine like theta plus pi, most people are going to think you're wanting to add pi to the angle before you're taking the cosine. So just use parentheses so we know exactly which one you're talking about. If we not is that? Uh yeah, it's whatever your initial velocity is, yeah. So a big initial velocity means your parabola goes really f high up in the air, really far, and a small velocity means it's the same exact shape, but it's going to be scaled way down. So your shape is dependent entirely on your angle, but then the actual how big or the magnification of the... Yeah, so it's a big magnitude, basically this... These numbers, this top uh, value and the distance will be really big. But the shape stays the same. So let's do one example problem. So we'll fire a projectile 500 meters per second. Theta is 60. And of course, we're in a frictionless world. So find the position. Po T. At t equals 10 seconds. And what is the max height? And where is the impact point? So in order to answer these, you basically need to create the position function. You could probably answer not what is the max height, but what time the max height occurs with just the acceleration. But in order to get the actual height, you only need 
the position. So might as well compute the position first and then answer the questions. And you can be lazy and use that formula at the top of the page. 60 is your theta, and v naught is 500. So you can pretty much skip a lot of the calculus steps. So it's mostly an algebra problem because the calculus is done for you. Also, flight time. So I'll give you guys about four minutes total for this. And I'll give you a two-minute head start. And then I'll see if I can lap you. Pretty good head start for this problem. Assuming we're on planet Earth, right? Yeah. At a reasonable altitude. Yeah. So I'll just use nine, negative nine point eight. Well, no matter what number you write down, it's an approximation, anyways. What does it use the equal sign? Oh yeah, this G should be positive because we already accounted. We already used a negative before. Uh, yeah, so we already accounted for the downward pull of gravity.
What's that? Yeah, these numbers are bad. I just remember realizing <laughs> that now. Is, is gravity 10? No, gravity it should be 10, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's just say that we're on planet whatever you want to be on. We're in between Earth and the moon. So it's a little heavier than the Earth. So would it be between the Earth and the moon? No, I really wish I could choose a different angle. Although, no matter what angle you choose, unless it's 0 or 90, you're going to have some values that you don't like. We can use a calculator for this time if you like. Five. All right, let's just write down the position. So how would I get position at t equals 10? Like t equals 10. Yep, v of 10. So whatever you get there, that's your position. How do I get max height? Plug in 0, 4. So I do need to do something with 0. And it's probably not the time value of zero. That's probably like the minimum time or the minimum height. Oh yeah, yeah. The derivative of the y component equals zero. So I want the y derivative to be zero. Because initially our y value is increasing, and then at some point it stops increasing and then decreases. So I want to know what's the exact point it goes from increasing to zero to decreasing. So set y prime uh, equal to zero. Oh no. Y prime. So how do I write that without using horrible math notation? Here's how I want to write it. My computer's super slow. So there's a pi function that projects to the y coordinate. Uh, let's not use that. So maybe a better way. How about that? V prime equals don't care, comma zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're looking at the so I need V prime. So we got V. Because of the way I, I just constructed it right off that form that we had, so I actually have to take a derivative if I went about it, computing it from the acceleration to the velocity to the position, I would have already had it. The velocity. Oh, no. What, this is not the velocity. Nobody said anything. <laughs> that should be R of T. R of T and R of T. <laughs> All right, so R prime, 250, comma, negative 10T, comma, nope, no more commas, plus 250 square root of 3T. R is just a slightly more spooky. Yeah, it is a problem. They look similar. So that's our R prime. Okay, so I want to know when, so this x coordinate, if you look, your x coordinate is never going to, your x velocity is never zero. It's constant. You can see that right here. So at some point, uh oh, an extra t in here. So at some point, our y velocity will equal zero. So we need to figure out when is that zero. Impact point. Oh, wait, it still didn't get the max height. This is the time of the max height. So let's call it T0. And now our max height will be the, we'll write R of this T0 value. And again, don't care about X coordinate. And the Y coordinate is super important. Negative 5 t naught squared plus 250 squared 3 t naught. So that's our height. So impact point and flight time are very closely related. So I need the impact, uh, the flight time 
to get the time of impact, and then it would be the x coordinate of the uh, of that time. So how to get the impact point? So we're going to set our original now our y position. So it'll be nope, that's the x position. So it'll be our y position. Yeah, so the parabola is symmetric, so you could half your height, or half your time is when you're going up, and half your time is when you're falling down. Not true when you have friction, because you're basically going, you'll land slower than when you took off, if you have friction, because you'll lose, whatever they talk, potential, your potential energy will turn into kinetic and then back, or something like that. Is that right? You have, when you're fired, no, you have a huge potential. You have huge kinetic when you're fired that slowly turns into potential that then turns back into kinetic. Yeah. 